Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is add local rotation? Let's go ahead and save our project and then jump right into this example. And it's pretty simple. I have a little character here. It's got a few objects, and I'm going to rotate the body. And a few things are connected to the body. Let's rotate it, oh, let's say 15 degrees on the Z. So every time I click, I'm adding to the local rotation 15 degrees on the Z. And I can show you this. Let's go to my body. Let's look at the rotation here, negative 60, and let's add. And you'll notice it's going to continue to rotate. Now the reason you saw negative 60 is by default, since this item is offset to go the correct direction, it starts at a negative 90 for the Z. Doesn't really affect what I'm showing here, but there you go. Now there's a few things to note, and we'll go ahead and cover them quickly. The add local rotation node is not the same as the add relative rotation. There is important differences, and let me show you them. You have a local rotation for an item when it's spawned in. Let me select our item, and let's look at it. This body has a local rotation of 0, 0, negative 90. Now, other items, such as children, have their own local rotation system, and things such as the parent have their own local rotation system. When you are adding to the local system, you are basically taking this set of numbers and changing them. So if I added, for example, 15 on the Z, well, negative 90 plus 15 should give me negative 75. And of course, I can repeat, or I can do the opposite. Let's go to something like a 60, and let's subtract 60. We're back down to a rotation of 0. The relative version of this takes into account the parent's information. Remember when I showed you all that in here? It will rel rotate it relative to the parent's rotational values and pretty much ignore its own personal stuff because you're going to say, hey, I want this item rotated 20 degrees on the Y based on where the parent is currently rotated, not where it is currently rotated. So that is what the difference between the relative and the local versions are. Now we have a sweeping and we have a teleport option. Sweeping doesn't work for rotation, so you don't have to worry about it. Teleporting, well, let's go back. Since it doesn't work, our output of our hit result doesn't give us anything either, so it's always going to return back false, basically, or a null object. Oh, not null. An object that's not going to give us a value we want. Teleporting is when we are doing our rotation, do we want physics, such as ragdolls, to know that we moved? If we check this, we are basically instantly teleporting, and physics are not affected. If it's unchecked, physics will be affected, and we may have some wild turning, such as if you rotated something 360 degrees in one frame. Now, add local rotation is not found on a normal search. Context sensitivity needs to be unchecked, or if you pull it off of a scene component, you're going to go and find it right here. Add Let's try, let's try local instead of locat. Add local rotation. And here we go. Now you notice by default, it's going to take in a scene component as our target. And it's going to take in a rotation or a rotator that's going to add or subtract based on your positive or negative values. Technically, it only adds. It adds a negative. It's subtracting. And it's going to basically apply that on the X, Y, and Z. You can, of course, split because it's a struct down to the individual floats or recombine. Now you do have the hidden options when you hit the little drop down, and that's going to give you sweeping and teleporting along with the hit result. That is pretty much it. That's going to wrap up our add local rotation node. Remember, you take in a scene component, take in a delta for your rotation, or how much do you want to add to the current one, and then sweeping and teleporting. And let me actually not finish this. Let me show you an issue on one of the major differences. So when I'm adding relative rotation, I've hooked up my relative rotation node now. And let's go and rotate it uh, 15 on the Y. And you're going to notice a problem. Well, it's going to get stuck. And you're going to notice it if we get closer. 
doing some really funky dancing. And if we look over here at our body, look at our rotation, and look at our values. We're basically running into gimbal lock. Because it's trying to rotate it based on the parent's rotation, which is technically the root rotation plus the box root rotation, you can run into gimbal, gimbal lock. We're not giving it a forced fixed value. We're telling it to add it in relative to something else. If we do the same thing with our local rotation node, let's go over here. Let's check out our body, currently negative 90. We'll do 15 on the Y, and look what happens. It accounts for gimbal lock, and you'll notice our rotational values down here are adjusting accordingly. Because it knows these values, it can easily add a fixed value to it in the local space, not worry about the parent space, and it's going to cause it to work properly with no gimbal lock. So that is going to wrap up the add local rotation node.